Good morning, folks. Please do not be fooled by what appears to be an utterly calm star. True, we had no big flares or CMEs, and no awesome filament movements can be seen, but there is news on the sun, and big news back here at Earth. We will begin, as always, at spaceweathernews.com, where one scrolls down to find X-ray solar flaring in the first chart still stuck down in B range. Might as well be sleeping. However, there are two sunspot groups that are interesting right now. First is the Central Bunch, which has no strong interaction or delta class yet, but it appears to be in development, and we've still got a day or two of geoeffective CME potential. Note the electrical surging, not just in the primary grouping, but ahead of it under the Earth scale. Could have some company soon. Then, of course, We've been watching umbral fields dance over the limb for a couple days, and they have now crested onto the Earth-facing disk. That means we ditched the ionized iron of 171 angstroms for this intensity gram image showing multiple umbras in a complex arrangement. At the highest EM energy levels, we detected a burst in the gamma range from Andromeda yesterday, but that wasn't all that swept by Earth. The leading density shock wave in orange can be seen impacting the Earth before the speed and particle temperatures in yellow and green begin to rise with the actual coronal hole stream itself. This comes just as Earth's shield was trying to recover, and now we have a level 3 geomagnetic storm with the KP index hitting 7. This is considered a very strong event. And the last two times we had level 3 storms or higher at Earth, we had aviation radar failures. Watch also for electrical, internet, communications, and other related system glitches today. Next, we're eyeing the coronal hole. Boy, it's massive, but it's also positively polarized. The Earth has been in that for a while, so while we've got the opening, the change of magnetism is not presented. Furthermore, finding the 9-11 mark up top and coming down to the derived coronal holes, we see that they are not very strong in an Earth-facing position. Gotta look back to the trailing bulb for power. That will be heading in here to face Earth by the end of the weekend. While we wait for it and for the magnetic storms to subside, the strongest quake of the last day was a 5.9 in Alaska. The top article today comes from NASA. We're looking at Io's volcanoes and detailing why they are in the wrong place. This can also be a little star water surprise for those who check out the article. We're getting flood measurements from Tropical Storm Etau. How a tropical storm shattered rain records set by super typhoons is a scary question, but the results are not so ambiguous. Rescue efforts are ongoing. Kilo is also set to hit the northern lands today. Moving across the waters, we find Linda lollygagging up the coastline there, and we'll also have alerts for storms in the central U.S. and up to the northeast at the convergence line. That wild convergence at Europe is finally crested. Weather shares in the comment section are greatly appreciated, and down under it's a lighter day with a few light convergence lines only. For solar alerts, folks, follow us on Twitter. Link is below. And the featured public content today is magneticreversal.org. It is made for the layman, and everything has a citation. Featured members' content at suspiciousobservers.org are the Electric Earth and Sun section, and the Humans and Electromagnetism section. Always good stuff during solar storms. Also, who could forget the Observers Conference in Pittsburgh is just five weeks away. Tickets for this and our Western U.S. show this January can be found at suspiciousobservers.org. For booth and sponsor info, please contact ben at observatoryproject.com. We've got some current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.